Hi, my name is Alex Dolphin. Welcome back to another episode of Ex Ante. Today we're going to discuss the case In Re Multiplan. This case was heard in the Delaware Court of Chancery in the year 2022. Let's go ahead and jump into the facts of the case. So this case is about SPACs. SPACs is shorthand for a special purpose acquisition company. These types of companies are blank check public companies. So investors in the public markets can invest into these companies. And the idea is that the SPAC will find a target, be a private company, and it will purchase that private company and essentially make it public. Now, why would you do this instead of just a traditional IPO or an initial public offering? The idea is that it's just a little bit faster. It's more streamlined. Um, and you don't have to go through all the regulatory requirements. You can go public more quickly through a SPAC. Um, the other idea is that there are these things called founders or promotes or sponsors in SPACs. These are the people who essentially work for the SPAC in a sense, and they're essentially finding the deal, farming out that deal and bringing it to the SPAC, saying this is the company that we should purchase. Now, sponsors generally get an outsized portion of the shares for their investment. And so there might be a problem where certain sponsors don't give as much money to the SPAC and they have a different interest. And that's exactly what this case addresses. So Michael Klein, um, he is a serial SPAC entrepreneur, as I like to say. Um, he began to, uh, he created this company called Churchill Capital Corp 3. So this was his third SPAC. And the idea with this SPAC was typical for any SPAC. We're going to find a target. We're going to take it public. Well, on the Churchill board, um, Michael Klein sat along with his brother and along with um, some other close business associates of his. Now, the people that were on the board, and let's just focus on Mr. Klein. Mr. Klein got a large portion of shares for a relatively tiny investment. So he had Class B founder shares, is what they were called. He put up $25,000 and he would get many, many shares in this SPAC, right? Um, whereas the public investors, they couldn't buy these class B shares, you know, at that great price, right? Because they weren't doing the work like Michael Klein was. They weren't trying to find the deal. The public shareholders were buying class A shares. They purchased these shares at $10 uh, per unit. So you see that the economic interest is a little bit different. Um, Mr. Klein did not put nearly as much money into the company. Rather, he put work into the company. And this is typical uh, for a sponsor. So the other people on the board also got portions of the shares, essentially indirectly through Michael Klein and his, his company that was, was the founder or sponsor of this SPAC. So Churchill uh, Capital Group 3 uh, finds its target, uh, its multi-plan. This is essentially just a healthcare data analytics firm. Multi-plan has a large customer, United Healthcare, uh, which you've probably all heard of, uh, UHC, was essentially responsible for 35% of multi-plans revenues. That's very, very substantial. Um, so looks like a good company. Uh, the shareholders think it's a good company. Um, and so these sh the shareholders in the SPAC um, all vote to approve this merger. They say this is a great idea and they choose to not redeem. Now what that means is briefly to explain it is you have a redemption right in a SPAC. And so these class A shareholders, they had the choice before um, the DSPAC merger before the SPAC purchased Multiplan, they could say, hey, you know what? I just want my 10 bucks back. I want out. I don't like Multiplan. That's just a structural aspect of, of, of the SPAC. Now, um, these shareholders, very few, um, they took advantage of their redemption rights. Very few did that. And the merger was overwhelmingly voted in favor of. Now, what Churchill left out of the proxy was the fact that um, they knew that Multiplan was going to lose United Healthcare as its largest customer. United Healthcare was developing its own in house data software that was essentially going to make its relationship with Multiplan obsolete. And so this is a quite a material thing that's going on here, right? Because if the largest customer for Multiplan is lost, well, then Multiplan probably isn't going to be nearly as valuable as a company. But Churchill did not put this information in the proxy statement. So the Class A shareholders that could have exercised their redemption right, they chose not to exercise their redemption right. Um, and the plaintiffs are saying they chose not to exercise it, but they would have had they have known that United Healthcare was not going to be a customer of Multiplan anymore. So that's the basis of the lawsuit. It was a failure to disclose that interfered with the shareholders' redemption rights. 
Now, the question uh, before the court is first, you know, what standard of review do we apply to, to these DSPAC uh, mergers? And Vice Chancellor Lori Will uh, first starts and says, we have to apply entire fairness here. First, we have to apply the entire fairness standard of review, review the most scrutinizing standard of review to the DSPAC merger in this case, because the founder shares um, constitute a unique economic benefit on the sponsors and on the board, the board that had these interests in these founder shares, right? To explain this, <clears throat> the economic interests diverge because those that were receiving the founder shares really didn't give hardly any money compared to the public shareholders that paid $10 per unit. And so if for the public shareholders, the idea is that if this company is gonna be worth more than $10 after the DSPAC merger, then a rational shareholder is gonna say, well, I won't exercise my redemption, right? right? I'm not going to do that because the shares are gonna be worth more and I could sell them theoretically for 12 or $15 three months from now. But if I believe as a shareholder before the DSPAC merger that, hey, you know, this company is probably not going to be as valuable, it's probably gonna be worth less than $10. Well, then a rational shareholder says, I'm gonna exercise my redemption right and, and get out of this while I can before I lose more money. Now the interests diverge for the founder shares and for the board because they had such a small initial investment, $25,000 for those founder shares, that essentially it's all upside for them. Even if the company, the, the post-merged company, even if multi-plan after the DSPAC merger is gonna be worth much less than $10 per share, it's still incredibly valuable for the board of directors to do that merger. Why? Because they just had such a tiny initial investment that it's all upside for them. And so VC Will essentially says that these divergent economic interests make it that we need to apply entire fairness here um, because the board is self-interested and largely because they are holding these founder shares that make them self-interested and the structure makes them self-interested of this SPAC. So once VC Will applies entire fairness, she says, Pretty clearly under Weinberger versus UOP, you have a duty to disclose. You didn't disclose something that you knew that was quite material. So um, yes, you violated your duty of loyalty under the entire fairness standard overview. Now VC will importantly notes that, hey, this doesn't, this isn't necessarily fatal to all DSPAC mergers. Here we had a claim that was a failure to disclose. That's why they breached the entire fairness standard. That's her basis, is they failed to disclose and it impacted the redemption, right? But, you know, if that weren't the case here, we might not be looking at the same type of deal. She says, I'm gonna leave the question of whether just the structure of a SPAC where you have founder shares and the public shares and the founder shares are worth way, way more money for a much tinier investment. I'm gonna leave that question for another day. Um, but I'm gonna say that this here fact pattern, uh, they violated their duty of loyalty, the board did, because they didn't disclose this material fact that Multiplan was gonna lose UHC as a customer shortly after the DSPAC merger. So what does this mean for SPACs? Um, well, what it means for SPACs is if you have a SPAC where founder shares are gonna be issued for a tiny investment, which is pretty typical of all SPACs, the, you know, the promote for the sponsors um, is quite lucrative. Well, you might, immediately land yourself into entire fairness land, no matter what type of merger you do. Now, this board breached their duty of loyalty under entire fairness because they failed to disclose. But the structure of the SPAC, if you have this outsized promote for a tiny investment, you're probably gonna be into entire fairness. What does that mean? Well, it means that you better be dang careful because entire fairness is incredibly scrutinizing as this case shows. And so what is the solution? You know, how could you get yourself out of uh, entire fairness? Well, perhaps you could separate the board from the holders of the, of the founder shares. So you could say, you know, the sponsor isn't on the board. Well, that doesn't seem all that intuitive. But if you did that, then you would have a, you, the board's economic interest, I guess, would be more aligned with the public shareholders. Um, the other option is you could use MFW. So you could use a cleansing procedure on, on a DSPAC merger. You could um, get independent uh, special committee, you get an independent special committee developed um, and make them approve the DSPAC merger, make them approve um, the proxy that's gonna go out to the shareholders that are gonna vote on it. Uh, but this just this case doesn't look good for SPACs um, and it makes it look like a SPAC is a much uh, scarier and, and much 
more uh, possible that you're going to be held liable uh, for a breach of your duty of loyalty if you have this this SPAC that's structured with a very outsized promote. Um, so it's an interesting case. You've know, seen SPACs downturn um, in the last little bit, and uh, maybe this will be the, the, the death nail in the coffin um, for SPACs, especially in this old school uh, promote uh, structure. So thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and I hope you have a nice rest of your day. Bye-bye.